What's going on, my boys? It's Nick coming at you with the Mutant Goaty combo tutorial slash test hand video. I uploaded this deck profile about a week ago now, and I'm sorry that there hasn't really been much content on the channel on the regular. I just got back from a vacation that I took, um, but I'm back and I'm ready to hit it the ground running, and I cannot wait to bring you guys this combo tutorial slash test hand for Mutant Goaty. Um, honestly, I didn't expect that profile to explode the way it did and it already has well over 2,000 views. So thank you all so much for continuing to support my channel. And with that being said, if you are watching this right now and you have not hit that subscribe button, I highly encourage you to do so because I will continue to be bringing really cool and unique deck profiles, um, pack openings, you know, deck discussions, and live duel videos. So please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, like this video, and comment down below what you guys think of Mutant Goaty, because honestly, I think that these two TCG exclusive archetypes pair quite well together. If you're not going to be playing Goaty as a pure deck and you're going to splash it in with something else, I think Mutant is a really good shell for that. Um, but with that being said, guys, we're going to jump right into our first combo here. And as you can see in front of us, we have a copy of Paces, Light of Goaty in our hand, as well as Mutant MO5 in our hand. This is going to be a simple two card combo showcasing what you can do if you have both of these cards in your hand. So we're gonna lead things off <clears throat> by normal summoning our Mutant MO5 in attack position and activate Mutant MO5's effect upon its normal summon to add a Mutant Monster from the deck to our hand except a copy of itself. Now in this case, if this is again just a two card combo, the only two cards we have in our hand are MO5 and Paces, we're gonna be searching Mutant Mutant off of MO5's effect and then because we control a mutant card on the field, we're able to special summon mutant mutant directly from our hand to our side of the field, uh, functioning as a really good extender for us. Now what we can do here is activate mutant mutant's secondary ability to tribute itself and then banish a mutant card from our hand or our deck. Um, and then special summon the appropriate mutant boss monster based on what we banish. Now in this case, uh, because we have to banish a mutant card, we can either go for anything in our deck. Uh, let's banish like a mutant clash, for example, a trap. And then because we banished a trap, sorry guys, trying to get the banish and graveyard in the same frame here. Since we banish a mutant trap, we'll be able to special summon mutant arsenal from our deck or hand uh, to our side of the field. And then we uh, lose life points equal to the summon monster's attack. So in this case, it would be 3000, but we get a free boss monster out for little to no effort. Now, off of Mutant MO5's secondary effect, because keep in mind we used the first effect already, MO5 states we can tribute itself and then banish a card uh, from our hand or field. In this case, we're going to take our paces that was in our hand and banish it as cost. So even if this gets negated, we still get to banish the paces from hand, which is really clean. And then because we banished a monster, we can special summon a Mutant Beast straight out of our uh, deck or hand if we happen to drew it. Uh, so now, again, this is a two-card combo. We're going to go ahead and end our turn on a copy of Arsenal and Beast. Now, these two cards alone are very strong together. Uh, Arsenal is a 3,000 attack monster. Beast is a 2,400 attack monster. Um, what Beast does is, as a quick effect, when your opponent activates a spell card or spell effect, quick effect, you can banish a card from your hand or that you control uh, to then negate that activation, and if you do, banish that spell. So he's almost like uh, Invoke Mechaba in, in a way, uh, except he only stops spell cards, which I think is pretty strong in this format, especially with decks like Tier Limit running around, and they like to fusion summon quite a bit. Um, granted, they don't always fusion summon using spells, but when they do, at least Beast is here to stop that and say no straight up. So that's really strong. Then you have Arsenal, who when, when the opponent activates a monster effect, you can target any monster on the field as a quick effect, then banish a card from your hand or your field to then uh, banish the targeted monster, which I think is cool. So Arsenal is really good form of disruption, just banishing any kind of monsters. And again, the trigger condition is when your opponent activates any monster effect from anywhere, which I think is really cool. And then as in addition to that, Arsenal cannot be targeted by trap cards and Beast cannot be targeted by monster cards. Uh, so they have very interesting forms of protection. So like Arsenal, for example, cannot be infinite and permanence, which is really strong. And then Beast can't be targeted by monster effects. So any monster effects that will target, they just can't target Beast. And then if both of these cards uh, get destroyed by the opponent, uh, Beast can add a banished trap, mutant trap, back to our hand, 
So we did banish a clash uh, to summon Arsenal, so we get this back to our hand. And then if Arsenal gets destroyed, we can add a Banish Mutant spell. But as of right now, we don't have any. So that's going to be our end phase, right? Now keep in mind, this is turn you know, one or whatever. It was a two-card combo. We're going to pass on Arsenal and Beast, both of which are really good disruptions. You have a Spell Negate and a Monster Banish at quick effect speed. Opponent's going to draw for their turn. And then on the standby phase, because Pace's Light of Goaty was banished last turn, he's going to Special Summon himself to our side of the field. And then because he was Special Summoned, uh, to our side of the field during the opponent's turn. Uh, we have now have the option to quick effect during the opponent's main phase. We can synchro summon into a fish synchro monster using the paces and any other cards we uh, control, which is really, really insane. So not only does this provide us additional banish fodder for our mutant effects, being beast or arsenal, um, so let's say like opponent activates a spell, Given that this is a two-card combo and we have no other cards in our hand or field, obviously if we use Arsenal or Beast, we'd have to banish themselves as cost for their effects, which we are able to do, which is also how mutants can play around under skill drain, because they send themselves off the board for cost, and then since they're not on the field, they still resolve, which is pretty insane. But now, we can use the paces as additional banish fodder, keeping our bodies on field so we're not having to like nag ourselves resources, we can banish the paces as cost again to either activate beast or arsenal's effects, and then because paces was banished on this following standby, on our turn, it'll come back a second time, which is really, really strong. But what makes this board really cracked is that let's say we go like arsenal, right? Opponent activates a monster effect, we target something on their side of the field and banish it. Uh, and then we banish like arsenal, for example, as cost, or even if we banish like beast as cost, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so let's just say we banish the arsenal's cost. Now, if the opponent continues to play through that, let's say, you know, they keep extending it, and right before they're about to leave their main phase, we can go quick effect on paces here, and quick synchro using paces and the mutant beast, give it to quick synchro into a level 10 fish. Uh, because again, we're, if we use paces effect to synchro during the opponent's turn, we can only make a fish synchro monster. Uh, but Paces is a level 2 tuner, and then Beast is a level 8 non-tuner, which means 2 and 8 make 10. So we can use both of these as Synchro Material to then go into the Goaty boss monster, which is Goaty of the Deep Beyond, during the opponent's turn, mind you. And then when Goaty of the Deep Beyond is Synchro Summoned during the opponent's turn, we banish all other cards on the field. It's a complete board wipe, and you, everything gets banished. Front row, back row, doesn't matter, including himself. And then during the following standby, the turn after he was banished from field, Goaty the Deep Beyond comes back. And then again, we'll draw for turn, you know, and then we'll have the Goaty the Deep Beyond. And then he'll gain attack based on the number of banished monsters times 500, which is pretty strong. So that's a simple two-card combo I wanted to showcase you guys, where with literally just a copy of MO5 and Paces, you can end on, like, a Spell Negate, a Monster Banish, and an entire Field Banish um, during the opponent's turn, off of just two cards. And you get a lot of recursion with these boss monsters, including the Deep Beyond, because he just keeps coming back every time he's banished. So I thought that was really, really strong and just something I wanted to showcase you guys. Now, let's just assume that going back, we had Arsenal and Beast back on field. Let's just pretend that we didn't use Goaty, um, didn't use Goaty the Deep, or Paces, excuse me, Paces, uh, Quick Synchro effect. Let's just say that Paces, like, stayed on board, or we used Paces as fodder for Beast or Arsenal's effects. So let's just say, you know, we, we go Arsenal effect and banish Paces, right? That's also something that's pretty cool too, because if Paces were to get threatened, for example, let's say opponent tries to force the battle, um, you can just preemptively go like Arsenal Beast, banish the Paces, and then, you know, do whatever Arsenal or Beast do, and keep the Paces safe in the banish zone. That way, when it comes back to your turn, the Paces will come back on your standby phase. And what's cool about this is that, um, when Paces comes back during your turn, it's just a level 2 tuner. You can use Paces as Synchro Material for whatever you want. It doesn't lock you into uh, Fish specifically. It only locks you into Fish Synchros when you're using his effect of Synchro during the opponent's turn. But on your turn, you can make any generic Synchro that you want, depending on the levels you have on the field. In this case, being level 10, because all the mutant bosses happen to be level 8, and Paces happens to be a level 2. Now, what's cool about this is that you can go into stuff like, uh, obviously, Goaty the Deep Beyond. You can still make it on your turn. I don't really understand why you'd want to, because unfortunately, if it's summoned during your turn, he doesn't get his effect to banish the board. Uh, but there are a bunch of other level 10s. I know in the profile, I talked about playing Baron de Fleur. 
uh, as an option that you can make during your own turn, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, Baron de Fleur is really strong and one of the greatest generic level 10 synchros. But if Baron de Fleur is like out of your price range, for example, or it's just a card that you're sick of seeing in profiles because everybody keeps splashing it everywhere, then you don't have to play Baron. There are other level 10 synchro options that you could potentially consider. Stuff like even Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chengying also works quite well. Not only because it's just a generic level 10 that you can make, but because his effects actually play very well into how mutant operate. Um, every, you know, he can, he gains 100 attack and defense, um, for each, uh, banish card, and then all monsters the opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense for each banish card. Since Mutant and Goaty specialize so much around banishing, you can easily get this guy pumped up to insane amounts of attack value, while also debuffing all of your opponent's stuff by really strong amounts as well. Um, but not only that, like, if you'd be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish any card out of your graveyard instead. Now, if that happens to be like a Goaty, like a Paces, for example, Paces will come back in the following standby because it was banished. And then not to mention, when any time a card is banished, except during the damage step, you get to banish a card from both your opponent's field and the their graveyard. And since Mutant banished for cost, even if you had like made the Chenging and then you go Beast to like banish something to negate a spell, then Chenging triggers to banish a card on their field and their grave as well. So like if you don't want to really want to play Baron because number one, it's just like pricey, or um, you're just tired of seeing Baron shoved into every profile, then I would say Chenging's are really strong consideration, or any other generic level 10 synchro, even like Ruddy Rose Dragon, for example, can be really strong, uh, depending on the format. I know Tier Element uh, and Sprite really do enjoy their graveyard, so having a card like Ruddy to just banish the graveyard is really strong too, so just something to consider. During deck building, there's a lot of flexibility within this extra deck. Like, you don't necessarily have to play the stuff that I was running. Um, you know, you could cut down, like, on the Trishula package if you don't want to play the, like, a Trish or the... Um, or the newer Trish, the Trishula Zero Dragon. You don't necessarily have to play these. You can swap them out for other generic, like, Synchros, or even, like, Xyz Monsters. I know you can even play Zeus in this deck. Um, I know in some of my older mutant profiles, I was running Zeus. So that's kind of one of the things that I like about this um, particular list. This is very, there's a lot of flexibility in what you can and, and can't run, which I like. You know, I, don't, I hate decks that you build and you're pigeonholed into a certain type or attribute or class of monsters. This deck doesn't lock you into anything specific unless you're synchroing on the opponent's turn through the goatee monsters. Outside of that, you have free reign to do almost whatever you want. Um, so I really do in enjoy decks that are like that because it allows you to get really creative on like your extra deck and just your deck building in general, which I really do enjoy. Um, but So that's, a, again, a two-card combo. Let's go in to another combo before we start off on our test hand so I can show you guys how this works. Um, keep in mind that was a two card combo uh, using MO5 and Paces. MO5 alone is just a one card combo because even if you just have MO5 in hand, you can go MO5, activate effect to search Mutant Mutant, Mutant Mutant specials itself, and then you can go into a level eight off of that really cleanly. Not to mention too with cards like Itali being at three and since all the Mutant starters are psychics, Itali puts in a lot of work in this list as well. Um, but real quick, let's uh, let's go into a Goaties real fast. I guess uh, we'll use another Paces, I suppose. And then let's just say... So here, let's go into another two-card combo. Let's just say we have Enoch and Paces again. So let's say you drew, or you just have both of these in your hand. So you, what you do here is you normal summon paces, activate its effect to banish itself to special a fish monster from your hand. In this case, it would be the Enoch. Now Enoch, uh, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one of your banished level four or lower fish monsters. In this case, it would be paces. And then you can special summon it in defense position, but negate its effects. Now there's a couple different routes you can take here. You can either go Enoch and Paces quickly into any level 8 synchro of your choice. Um, in this case, we have like White Arrow Whale, which is really crazy, or Askan, the Bicorn Goaty is really strong. You could even also consider running um, Ad Emancipator Dragite, because he's another generic level 8 water. And since all of your mutants and goaties happen to be water, you're always going to have a water and grave to have Dragite be live for the spell Trap Negate, which is really good. Um, but right now, for this list specifically, we're just on Askan or White Arrow Whale which is pretty fun. Um, but you don't necessarily have to make those cards right this second. Um, if you really want to get creative here, 
what you can do is you can go yeah so we're gonna go Enox effect a secondary effect says you can banish a fish monster from your hand or face of field keep in mind that's cost so we'll banish the paces again to then add one goatee trap from your deck to your hand Say Goaty Chain. Right now, this is the only trap that they have is Goaty Chain. Goaty Chain's pretty cool. And then, if you wanted to, you can just set the chain face down, pass turn, and then opponent will draw. And then on their standby, Paces will come back with his own effect, now allowing you to have the ability to quick synchro into a fish synchro monster on their turn. Now, what's interesting about this is that what you can do here is you can quick sync. Let's say like they're comboing off or whatever. You can go quick sync using Paces and uh, Enoch to make Askan the Bicorn Goaty during the opponent's turn, mind you. And then Askan's effect will trigger, it states if this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target a fish monster you control and one card your opponent controls, that's cost, and then you banish them both, right? So then you target the Askan and then any card they control, banish them, and then Askan's effect can trigger and states if this card is banished, you can banish a fish monster from your graveyard to special summon this card. So let's say here we'll banish the paces from Grave to then revive the Askan. So we basically just got like a free disruption on their turn in the form of a targeted banish of any card at quick effect speed, which is really, really strong. And then that's not all. What we can do here, like let's say the opponent continues to play through it or, or whatnot, we can go Goaty Chain and it, we can banish a face of fish monster we control. So in this case, the Askan. So then special summon one of our goatee monsters that's banished in our hand, deck, or graveyard with a different original name uh, from the monster banished uh, to activate this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. So now we can go into stuff like Shift, we can go into stuff like another copy of Enoch if we want to get it out of the deck for example. Then we can summon Enoch like on the opponent's turn, activate Enoch's effect to then revive the paces from the banish zone. Now granted its effects are negated. Um, but that's still pretty cool because then it just sets us up for the follow-up on turn like two or three um, Which I think is really really insane And then again, we can go Enoch again to search another copy of Goaty Chain And then Goaty Chain can actually be used to revive Askan out of the graveyard as well um, So the Goaties themselves like I said in the profile, I think They're on the cusp of having the potential to be really really powerful They just don't have enough cards yet in theme to make their plays really pop off. But like I said, the worst card in the deck really, in my opinion, is Enoch right now, because there's not enough ways to summon him easily. Like you basically have to hard draw the paces and Enoch together in order to get Enoch on field or use Goaty Chain to do it. But then the card that Goaty Chain banishes can't be Enoch because whatever you banish and summon has to be a different name from each other. Um, so there's not too many ways to summon this right now. The only real reason why I enjoy playing it is because it's, it's the only level six within the theme, and this is how we make our level eight synchros. Outside of that though, there really isn't much of a purpose to play Enoch, but he does come up from time to time, which I think is really great. Um, so that's it for the little bit of a combo here. Let's go and uh, pile shuffle this real quick, and I can show you guys what a test hand actually looks like. I'm gonna pile shuffle for you guys live on camera. Um, I don't want to make this video too too long, but I did want to put something out there for you guys to showcase some of the combos Because I know you guys during the profile asked me for that and I wanted to deliver on my promise um, So we're gonna be pile shuffling here very quickly and then hopefully we draw a pretty decent hand and I am able to showcase something quite unique and strong um, as far as bricking goes, obviously you do have the chance to brick on the high level mutants. You really don't want to draw them. That's why we're only playing the four. And that's why some people play just one of each and just play three. Because technically they are like garnets like when you draw them. They don't really do anything, especially since you can summon them from deck. You never really want to draw them in hand because they could have been literally any other card. So uh, we're going to get a pretty nice shuffle here, hopefully. You guys can catch that on camera. And then we are going to cut on camera as well. And I will go ahead and we'll draw our five card opening hand. We got Paces, Mutant Cry, Enoch, Mutant Mutant, and Mutant Beast. And this is what I was talking about. You don't want to draw the high level ones, but somehow you always find them. But this opening hand actually is pretty decent if I say so myself. It's not horrible. Um, let's see here. So what we can do with this hand 
is uh, we can either do one of two things. It depends on how we want to go about it. We can either normal summon the paces here, uh, and then activate paces effect to banish itself to special fish from hand, in which case would be Enoch. And then we could go Enoch to bring back the paces from the banish zone in defense position, but keep in mind the paces will be negated. Now, we can do that, and then we can go into like a level 8 synchro from here. We can also use Enoch to banish the paces to then search a mute, uh, goatee trap. From the deck to our hand, which in this case would be Chain, uh, which is obviously really, really strong. Um, and then go uh, about the combo that I just showcased you guys with Askan, getting the quick banish on their turn. Um, however, we can also go Mutant Mutant. Since we don't have a Mutant card, we can just normal summon Mutant Mutant, then go Mutant Mutant's effect. Uh, secondary effect that we can uh, tribute itself and then uh, banish a Mutant card from the hand or the deck. So we'll tribute itself. And then we can like banish a mutant card. Now, usually you want to banish from deck to do this, but here's what's interesting. Since we hard drew the mutant cry, I think banishing from hand in this case makes the most sense. We can banish the beast from hand to go ahead and summon a copy of beast from our deck. All right, now, now bear with me here. This might look a little awkward. We're going to summon a copy of beast from deck in defense position just to avoid playing around um, lightning storm. And then what we'll do here is we'll set our copy of Cry and then pass turn. Now this doesn't look like much, but what's going to happen here is we have the spell Negate and Banish off of Beast. And what we can use for fodder for that is our copy of Paces in hand. Uh, so basically when the opponent activates a spell card or spell effect, we can banish a card as quick effect from our hand or field to then negate that activation and banish that spell. So we can use Paces in hand as fodder for that. So let's just say they activated any kind of spell card, right? You can go paces, banish the paces, negate, and then banish that spell they activated. And then now, if the beast were to be threatened, for example, we can activate Mutant Cry, and then we can Fusion Summon into Mutant Synthesis using our copy of Mutant Mutant in the graveyard and our banished copy of Mutant Beast, shuffling those materials back into the deck, similar to a card like Tri Brigade Revolt. And then we can literally summon a copy of Mutant Synthesis during the opponent's turn, and then Synthesis upon Fusion Summon targets a card in the field and destroys it. So we can easily keep our beast alive from being run over by battle, for example. And now we have two of our mutant bosses on field, both of which who float. And then on the standby of the next turn, like let's say the opponent passes, because Paces was banished, we'll get to special summon the Paces on our standby phase um, to our side of the board, and then obviously we'll draw for turn well, we'll draw for turn first, then special paces during the standby. But, and then if you look, we just drew into Mutant ST46. So another starter for us, which is really strong. But now we're not locked into just fish synchros because now we can use paces as a tuner on our turn to make a level 10 of our choice using beast as material, for example. Or we could even use the synthesis if we really wanted to as material as well to make a level 11 synchro. Um, we're not playing it in the deck, but if you wanted to, you could easily run Psychic and Punisher. Uh, in this deck, and then go Paces and Mutant Synthesis together to make End Punisher, since pa uh, Synthesis is a 9, Paces is a 2, make Punisher on our turn, and then remember, since we use Mutant Mutant on turn, uh, on you know, on our test hand, we would have paid life to summon beasts, so our life points are lower than our opponents already, meaning End Punisher, you know, has its effects to be immune, and we go Battle Phase, and then we can gain the attack equal to the difference of our life points, so that's something that's pretty cool to consider as well. Or if we don't want to do that, we can go Paces and Beast to make any generic level 10. It could be Baron, it could be, you know, Chenging, whatever you want to run, really doesn't matter. Um, or, also, we could go Synthesis and Paces as Link material. And then we can go into stuff like um, Eerie of the Water Charmer. We can go into cards like Abyss Keeper, since it just requires two waters. And then Abyss Keeper allows us to special our Enoch from our hand which is really unique, um, or we can even go into something like a Sprite Elf. Since our Paces happens to be a level two monster, Sprite Elf in this deck just puts in a ton of work, giving you targeting protection uh, to anything it points to, um, and then being able to revive something like a Paces, and then we can go into like a level 10 Synchro, like Baron, and then have the Sprite Elf actually point to the, the zone Baron's in, which is another really strong combo, and then that's all assuming, and again, like these are just the plays we can make with the stuff we had on field. We haven't even like normal summoned our ST46 yet to get even more value. Like we can, there's so many different routes that we can take with this deck. It's really, really strong. Um, 
you know, like let's just say for example, we kept synthesis, have the paces, let's just say we normal ST46, activate its effect to search a mutant spell trap from deck to hand. In this case, we can literally grab whatever we want, another copy of Cry. We could grab the, a copy of the field spell. Uh, we can even grab like uh, Mutant Clash or Expansion here. Let's just say we grab Expansion. Then we can go SD46 effect. Um, we can banish the... How do we want to do this? Yeah, we can just banish the paces again. As fought, Tribute itself, banish paces, because I forgot we shuffled our copy of secondary copy of Beast in our deck. This is why we play two Beast uh, in the profile, because we can do this again next turn. Then we can just summon another copy of Beast. And then we can literally, since Beast and Beast are level eights, we can consolidate those to then go into like a Dingirsu, for example, and then just non-target, non-destroy, send a card away, or just keep the two level eights on the board for the pressure and attack. And you know, that's 24, 25, 24. It's decent amount of damage. And then keep in mind, the paces will just keep coming back every single standby. And then we have expansion now, and expansion's like a an archetype version of the emergency teleport for mutant, which is just really crazy. So you, hopefully you guys can kind of see how things start spiraling out of control. Like at first glance, it seems like this deck really won't do much, but in the like when you start playing it out and running through a lot of the combos, it actually is very, very strong. Um, and like I said, there's tons of flexibility with the extra deck and how you want to go about it. Like I said, I know I didn't talk about it too much, but Abyss Keeper and Sprite Elf are very, very strong in this deck, given that MO5, Mutant MO5, is a level 2, and all of the low-level uh, Goaty monsters happen to be level 2s as well. But um, that's going to be it, guys, for the combo tutorial and test hand video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Stay tuned on the channel, because I will be trying to bring you guys a live duel video of me piloting this deck. I haven't figured out what um, who I'm going to be playing against, but... Obviously, stay tuned on the channel for that, because that's going to be pretty exciting. And then I'm also still working on a crawler profile, as well as my update to my really, really well-renowned Melfi list that's gotten over, like, 6,000 views already. Um, so I'll be updating Melfi with the brand new support out of Power of the Elements. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to sign off here. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Comment down below what you thought. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned for really more and cool Yu-Gi-Oh! content.